There we go, Doc. So we had no inter introduction then, right? Uh, well, no, it did. We had a little uh, false start here somehow. So um, hopefully we're all set. Great. Welcome today. We're, we're here for your questions. If there's anything that I say is definitely not meant to diagnose you or cure you. So if you, anything that we talk about, just check with your doctor before implementing um, what we're going to talk about today. All right. Sounds great. Why don't we go straight over to our great love of social media. And we're going to start off with Cookie from YouTube. I get acid reflux at night, especially after having sweets. Uh, I get a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, let's see. Afterwards, what can I do to alleviate that reaction? Well, it's kind of like if you take a hammer and hit your thumb, and what, what can I do to stop the pain, right? Stop hitting your thumb? <clears throat> no, it's basically with uh, you know the sweets, you have to stop the sweets. You have to stop the sweets. It's just going to... It's going to create all sorts of imbalances, deficiencies. It's going to relate to acid reflux. So um, go on keto and uh, you can go to drbird.com under videos in the first video. So it says start here and you start cutting that, cutting out the sweets and doing intermittent fasting. Chances are your symptoms will be greatly improved, if not completely gone within probably a week. All right. Very good. Let's go. We've got four participants and one, uh, Stephen, who keeps dropping on and off. So, Stephen, I'm going to get you on the air right away. So unmute yourself. Remember, one question, 30 seconds. Thanks for joining the show. You're on with Dr. Berg. Hey, Dr. Berg. I've been a follower since March 2021. I went from 300 to below 160, lost about 12 inches off my waist. Wow. So on your advice. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, my wife complained about how much weight I lost. And, uh, so I moved my weight up to 184 at the end of, uh, December. And by January, I started losing weight uncontrollably. I dropped from 184 to 160 in, uh, two months without being on keto. And I'm concerned that I can't control my weight loss. Mm -hmm. how, how tall are you? Five nine. Okay. Um, do you have any other? Uh, did you have any other tests from the doc? Um, because you know, you just to make sure there's no other issues going on. Have you? Have you had that? It was everything normal. Did you have any abnormals on your blood test? Yesterday, I had a full battery test, including the thyroid, and I won't have the results back till tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I would just look into that, see, see if there's anything else that shows up. Um, and I guess I, you know, it's hard to tell because I don't know your history and things like that. And plus, you know, the version of keto, the keto diet, I don't know what you're doing with that. It could be any number of things. I know, uh, especially if you're losing more weight than you should. Um, you know, we want to also look at, are you having sufficient protein? Are you having enough calories, are the nutrients uh, that you're taking uh, enough? There's a lot of things there that to unpack. So I think I would just wait till you get the results, see what shows up and see if there's anything that could indicate a reason for weight loss that much, especially without being on keto. Okay. I appreciate it. Sure. All right. Let me tell you, you're just, you're a wonderful lifesaver. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Very kind, Stephen, and we look forward. Why don't you get back with us and let us know how you're doing? Because that's spectacular. By the way, I didn't have the bell ready. So you get one bell for that astounding weight loss, but uh, we want you to be healthy. So get back with us and let us know that all is well uh, with you. All right, let's see. Let's uh, move on to our first quiz question of the day. These are big, big hits, and there you go. Okay, for some reason, Steve, um, I'm on my side. I cannot see that, so maybe you can just read it for, for us. It would be my honor. Quiz question number one. What is the primary vitamin deficiency behind tonsillitis and enlarged tonsils? So, uh, audience, dig that up. Dig into that, rather, and let's see what happens. Let's go back to social media. First of all, in the green room, we have people from originally from Kosovo and... Uh, from all sorts of wonderful places, let's see, um, Amsterdam, etc. 
So let's go ahead with our wonderful list that demonstrates how much people love Dr. Berg all around the world. So we'd like to say good morning to all of our viewers joining us this morning from the UK, Canada, Mexico, Jordan, Albania, India, Aruba, Cyprus, Eritrea, Chile, the Cayman Islands, South Korea, Morocco, Iran, Jamaica, Brunei, Greece, Norway, the Dominican Republic, the United Arab Emirates, Uzbekistan, uh, uh, Tanzania, haven't heard from them for a while, the Netherlands, Armenia, Pakistan, Paraguay, Japan, Denmark, Israel, France, Poland. Uh, we got someone from Poland on this morning, Czech Republic, Turkey, Ireland, Italy, Oman, Egypt, Sri Lanka, Croatia, uh, Sweden, Finland, the Republic of Congo, Scotland, Tunisia, Qatar, uh, Germany, South Africa, Switzerland, Guyana, Kenya, uh, Belgium, Ethiopia, Peru, Taiwan, Australia, Islamabad, Slovakia, the Virgin Islands, or almost done, folks, New Zealand, Spain, Dubai, Peru, Portugal, Lebanon, uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia, and all across these United States. And people work really hard to want to be noticed. So I hope you guys don't mind grinning and burying it as we celebrate how many people call in each week. So uh, let's see. Um, let me go back here. How about Beeman from Rumble, our new partner? Thanks for sharing your posts about Ozempic. My wife went on it for type 2 diabetes back in July and had a number of bad reactions like rashes all over her body and around her eyes. Ouch. She's been off it for a month and now the rashes have all cleared up. What are some more natural ways she can use uh, to treat her diabetes and I guess weight loss? Her blood uh, glucose bounces around from 130 to over 200. Help. You, you can do so much just with just food. Food is uh, the best medicine. Cut down the carbs. Um, do intermittent fasting. Do it healthy. And uh, you won't have diabetes. Um, you know, Zembic uh, kind of puts the person dependent on some external source to help you lose weight. And it comes with a package. And what do they expect you to do that's the rest of your life? Unfortunately, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's like the number two best-selling drug right now. And they're, even the American Academy of um, Pediatrics, you know, is starting to recommend that kids just start doing that too, which is ridiculous. So um, go back to the basics. Um, you can do a lot with food. And unfortunately, um, there's probably not a lot of money in food. And there's definitely not a lot of money when you do intermittent fasting because we also know that intermittent fasting, um, you know, now suddenly causes heart attacks. So you have to be careful about that. So maybe, Steve, you should start snacking more frequently uh, now because they did that report. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, let's see. Jacqueline from YouTube has a good question. What kind of supplements would help uh, relieve sore muscles after a workout? I don't want to rely on Tylenol and ibuprofen. Thanks, she says. You know, I have my genetics... Um, tend to be more inflammatory. So if I overdo it, I'm sore too long. So what you want to do, the, the secret is vitamin E. Tocotrienols is a little bit better. You take that right before you work out and watch what happens to your soreness. It'll go way down because vitamin E is necessary for um, uh, improving repair, decreasing inflammation and decreasing uh, scar tissue. So it's good for fatty liver, but it's definitely good after you exercise to reduce soreness. All right. Very good. Our astute audience has leapt right into the first question, which asked, what is the primary vitamin deficiency behind tonsillitis and enlarged tonsils? And 65% of our respondents say it's zinc. 15% say it's vitamin D. 10% say it's K2. 5% say it's iron. And the remaining 5% say it's vitamin C. Well, I'm going to do, I'm doing a video on this, uh, the tonsil stones, which is related to tonsillitis, which is related to an enlargement of the tonsils. And so uh, as I was doing a deep dive, looking at the research on this, I, I noticed something just kind of jumped right out and slapped me in the face, Steve. It was, it said, um, one of the risk factors is lack of sun. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. So then I go into vitamin D and I find a ton of research. So um, huge correlation between um, low vitamin D and not only inflammation of the tonsils, but enlargement of the tonsils as well. So 
Uh, vitamin D is what what you need. Like I don't I don't know about you, Steve. Did your grandmother or mother ever give you cod liver oil? Um, no, I don't think so. We had this other tasty stuff, big vitamin junk, sort of um, amber colored stuff. But no, they didn't torture us with the cod liver oil or the castor oil, which was the other the one. Cod sold. liver would. It's really hard to get vitamin D from the diets, but you can get it from cod liver oil. So, um, you know. It was kind of a folklore medicine given to a lot of kids growing up, which is really smart. Now we don't do it. And, um, you know, the more the child or adult stays indoors, the less vitamin D they're going to have. So that can affect the tonsils. The tonsils are the first line of defense to protect and notify the rest of the immune system that, hey, there's a pathogen in the house. Do something. Start to, you know increased defenses to protect this pathogen from going into the lungs as well as into the digestive system. Ouch. Okay, Sadow 10 from Rumble. Uh, do you recommend using Kerrygold butter? And I haven't heard of that. Is that familiar, Doc? Yeah, yeah, that's from Ireland. It's a, it's a really good uh, brand. Um, I highly recommend it, absolutely. All right. You know, well, if you could find it, there's a... I, I kind of like to experiment with different butters. There's, if you could find cultured butter, which is fermented, um, wow, that's a special butter if you can find it. I have found in America, it's probably harder than Euro European butters, but I did find one from Vermont. So I ordered that, super expensive, but I wanted to try it. I was eating that by the gallon. It's really good. Very good, all right. Second question. What is the primary deficiency behind... Uh, uh, mitral valve prolapse. And I'm proud, I think I said that right. So audience, uh, yes, give us an answer on that. And Ellie from Rumble, my test results indicate my endothelial layers have been damaged. Would taking vitamin C help fix that? If uh, so, how much should I take? Vitamin C is one thing you could take. Um, you might be uh, better if you take vitamin E, tocotrienols. I mean, even if you take a look at what, you know, in, in this so-called bad LDL cholesterol, there's, there's vitamin E in there. Interesting. Why is that there? To protect you against the oxidation of cholesterol. So um, that endothelial layer on the inside of the arteries, it's a single cell layer. Um, and inflammation can occur when you eat the wrong foods. So if you take enough vitamin E, that would be probably be the best protective factor for your endothelial cells all right very good let's see i tell you we've got a um a couple from new york and i noticed that they're on camera together and i noticed that they're not arguing or yelling at each other currently so maybe we should put them on before they erupt in some matrimonial discourse and so <laughs> um here they go and go ahead with your question for dr Berg. Um, Dr. Berg, how are you? I'm going to speak on behalf of my wife because your English isn't very good. Um, <clears throat> basically, we don't really know what, what question to ask because she's done every test under the sun um, regarding her acid reflux-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and she still gets extreme pain in her esophagus and in her LES, burning Every, all the all the symptoms, but it's been determined that she has non-acidic reflux, and she recently did a SIBO test, which she was borderline. Um, so we were just wondering what the next step would be. Have this you, is, had, have you but, done the uh, Heidenberg she, test, pH uh, test? Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. The Heidenberg test. Did you have you done that one? Heidenberg test. P, P, did you say pH? It checks the pH of the stomach. Yes. I did the Bravo pH testing. Bravo my, pH testing. Manometry, did. esophageal, and I did upper GI, endoscopy, CAT scan. Colonoscopy. Colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. I did um, Im impedance testing. This one that shows that I have only non acidic reflux. Okay. All right. Um, what was your pH of your stomach? Did they tell you? They said normal, everything normal. Everything, every test is normal. I would love to know what their version of normal is, but okay. So have you, have you also went the other route and tried betaine hydrochloride? No. no what is no, that exactly? I'm sorry, doctor. Okay. So that's a remedy to build up stomach acid. So here's the thing. Um, 
a lot of times there's a range of acid um, that they'll use. And if it's on the high range, you know, sometimes they might say that's normal. I, I like a pH to be between one and three. So let's say yours is four. And they go, well, that's still normal. It's, it's almost within the normal range. And uh, you're going, oh, wow, you know, I still have a problem. So you don't really, it's not related to acid. So you could just try, this is a very inexpensive way to, to figure this out. You just start taking betaine hydrochloride. I'd start with probably four before a meal, go up to maybe seven each day, add another one until you're up to seven before a meal and do that for a week. See if your, your acid reflux goes away. Let's say it does. Then you know it's there's there's definitely you need your particular body needs a deeper or a lower pH. So that's one thing. There's other reasons why that valve doesn't close. One is the autonomic nervous system is uh, dysfunctional, and that has to do with usually a lack of B1, which they're never going to test that. No. So what you could do. After you did experiment number one, let's say that didn't work, do experiment number two, which both of these are so inexpensive. Get some natural B1, probably take, you know, maybe double or triple the amount of you'd normally take. Just take that each day for about a week. See if that re resolves it. If it does, then you know it's the autonomic nervous system um, because that B1 is necessary for the, um, the closing of the valve as well. So that would be the two things I would test. Um, I mean, there's, then you can go into maybe some, my videos that I talk about gastritis and there's all the remedies for gastritis, which could be an issue. And since you're borderline SIBO, I, you could, that relates to other, other approaches and handlings. But I think I would start with, uh, the, the low hanging fruit, which is the betaine hydrochloride. You can buy that anywhere. Start taking that before you eat and see if it doesn't just solve your problem right there okay yeah okay. we're definitely gonna give it a try i mean we don't have too many options left. yeah so some of the t tests they do they're looking for serious diseases they're not going to find anything usually no. they're rare so yeah we did every test yeah well you gotta this is more of a subclinical it could be functional and sometimes they don't they don't look at like some of the uh, deeper issues, but anyway, um, try that and then let us know how, how that works for you. Absolutely. Thank Definitely. you. All right, folks, that sounds so frustrating and good for you, husband, trying to follow this for your wife. Uh, and oh. please, please do get back with us and uh, let us know what we hope will be some success in the future for both of you. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Boy, we've got some great guests. They're all behaving and asking their questions succinctly, and we just couldn't be more proud of them, frankly, uh, for that. All right, let's go back to social media, of whom we're also proud. And let's see, Bambi from YouTube. Good morning, Dr. Berg. When will you add eight-hour berberine to your cachet of nutritional weapons for our health? Is that something you sign on for, eight-hour berberine? It's a really, really good remedy. Um, typically, it's like almost, it almost could work like a, alternative metformin for blood sugars, but it does a lot of other things too. It does a lot of other things related to supporting liver function, a fatty liver, because it can make insulin more sensitive. So you can imagine you're addressing a, um, this core problem, which is insulin resistance with, with a remedy that's like really targets that thing. So the, the spectrum of different problems that it can help you with is very broad. So um, berberine is probably one of the best remedies for insulin resistance. Uh, so I think um, I, I have talking about, I've talked about it. I recommend it. So um, definitely try it. All right. Well, second question for the day, which has been answered and it asks, what is the primary deficiency behind uh, mitral valve prolapse and even issues of cardiac stuff, our audience is brilliant, I hope. 75% of our respondents say it's vitamin E, 20% say it's vitamin B, and the remaining 5% say it's vitamin A. Okay, so the answer is a magnesium deficiency. Oh, good grief, audience. So, so let me explain this, because um, I did another video on this. What's the, pr the first earliest sign of a magnesium deficiency is tetany. 
well, mitral valve prolapse is kind of like, in, in, and also if we can carry that on to arrhythmias, because it's like one of the side effects and palpitations, um, kind of fall in the family of like a, a heart um, equivalent to tetany because we have this muscle nerve problem. Like so if you have a little twitch right through there, if that's going on the heart, um, it can really affect the valves. The valves of the heart um, with the mitral valve prolapse, they're little leaflets and um, they're kind of flapping, bulging out. That means a prolapse. That's why the word prolapse is bulging out. And so you don't have this very efficient uh, blood flow um, motor situation. It's kind of like a, a noisy motor. And that can create, you know, um, difficulty breathing, um, heart palpitations, weakness, fatigue, arrhythmias, palpitations, things like that, and even anxiety. So the main treatment for that is um, beta blockers, but sometimes they use calcium channel blockers as well. Well, it just so happens that uh, beta blockers lower adrenaline. And there's a huge correlation between adrenaline and magnesium. When you're low in magnesium, your adrenaline goes higher. Interesting. And what is another name for a calcium channel blocker? Magnesium. So um, I'll be releasing a video on this topic soon, but um, it's right, I mean, right in all the literature, uh, double-blinded studies, uh, magnesium tends to be a really good remedy to significantly lower the symptoms of mitral valve prolapse and its related associated problems as well. All right, very good. This next question, I do not like at all. Not at all. True, false, cancer cells are immortal. Say it's not so, audience. So anyway, we'll see what they think about that. But that sounds very ominous, which cancer is in general. Let's go back to social media some more. Uh, let's see. Uh, poor David from Rumble. I'm always feeling hungry, hungry, and the hunger doesn't go away even after a meal. After a meal, my stomach gets a burning sensation. This has been going on for two years now. What are your thoughts about what's causing this constant hunger? Ouch. One of the best ways that you know you're in the ketogenic diet adapted to ketones as your primary fuel um, is your hunger goes away. So the first thing I would go after is I'd like to really look at your, your sugar, your, your carb intake, and really bring that down as close to zero as possible. And probably because you have um, related digestive issues, uh, you might want to just do carnivore if you have, especially if you have your inflammation in the gut. Um, and then parallel with that, do intermittent fasting. That way we can really get you to start burning your fat fuel and the hunger should go away. Um, so that's where I would start. Uh, there's a lot of additional things you can do, but that would be the most important thing to start right off the bat. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Nina from YouTube. I just discovered I have POTS. I get electrical shocks in my brain so badly when I move a certain way. What's the best way to approach this condition? That sounds icky. This is the condition where you stand up and you can't stand up. You feel dizzy. You have to lay down. It's terrible. Um, and this is a, a problem within the autonomic nervous system. Okay. So when you stand up, the body should adapt to that gravity. Well, the system is not adapting. So, um, the problem really is in the autonomic nervous system could be the adrenals, but the sympathetics and the parasympathetic. So the best remedy for that, that I know of is to take higher doses of natural B1. Um, the higher doses of natural B1 support this problem. It targets it. But, um, you know, the thing about it is sometimes people say, well, yeah, I tried, I, I took some, you know, for a day and it didn't work. I'm like, do you realize it takes a while for it to kick in? You have to take it for some weeks before you start seeing any change because especially if you're very, very deficient. So, um, you can actually look up my video on this. I did a whole video on this and it would be helpful if you even got this device. Um, it should be on my website, but it's, um, it's called heart rate variability, stress and recovery, um, 
analyzer because that way you can literally measure how much sympathetic, how much parasympathetic you have. You can see what's going on. Um, and then you'll know exactly what to target because sometimes maybe you're, you just don't have enough uh, sympathetic nervous system or maybe it's like you're deficient in this other thing over here. So it's really important to understand what's causing this problem exactly. All right, very good. Uh, the Speaking of the icky question that I didn't like, uh, the audience has already ripped into it, which asks, true, false, uh, cancer cells are immortal. And 88% of the respondents uh, say it's false. And I'm with you. I don't like cancer. 12% say it's true. So I have to be stand corrected because I was telling people cancer cells are immortal. They live forever. However, I recently found out that's not actually true. And I'm like, it just this is new information for me. Um, the cancer cell does die just like the rest of our cells. But the cancer cell line can live forever. So in other words, there's a certain limit where our, our normal cells can, you know, the line of going from one generation to the next, and then it, it just like putters out. Well, with cancer cells, we don't have that regulation. So that was interesting. That's fascinating. Um, the other thing that I learned about cancer that I'll be doing another video on is that if you take a tumor, for example, um, I didn't know that up to 80% of that tumor is dead cells, dead cancer cells. So cancer is very sick. It's a very sick uh, bunch of cells. Um, and there's a lot of necrosis, which is kind of like de decayed, um, degenerative cells. And so that's another interesting factor because that relates to maybe some strategies to target this, um, this cancer, which I'll be talking about in a video. But so the most important thing to do is to prevent cancer by keeping your mitochondria really, really healthy. So don't wait until you get cancer, do something now. And so, um, it's much easier to prevent it than to try to undo it once you have it. Yeah, no kidding what a horrible thing that is. Scourge on humanity. All right, let's, um, let's go to Wafa from Rumble. Can niacin uh, contribute to elevated blood sugar levels? That's a good question. Not to my knowledge. I mean, I, I think it, uh, niacin could even help your blood sugars. It doesn't doesn't raise sugar. It uh, can help stabilize sugars. Niacin is like a magical vitamin. I mean, it can directly give you what some something called NAD, which helps you carry these electrons to make uh, ATP. So it's like a it helps the the body make the more energy and energy batteries. And so without that, you're going to be tired. So. Um, it's good for inflammation, even though niacinamide is good, but niacin can also work for that. But it's mostly known for regulating all aspects of cholesterol. And it's one of the only things that will increase HDL because there's no drug that will do that. Um, and, um, a lot of people don't like the flush, but it's a, it's, it's not a dangerous thing. Um, I think maybe you should get used to it and start small. But I think uh, most people should be on niacin. Um, uh, I, I take like 500 milligrams every single day. And it, it does relate to longevity as well because it helps the mitochondria. Um, there's, there's more to this uh, mystery, but niacin is definitely at the top of the list as far as great remedies for uh, so many things. I, I mean, the research is hardcore on this as well. It's not like weak. All right, that's very encouraging. Quiz question number four uh, is a true falser. The Bill Gates funded APEL, an acronym for something, uh, food technology has been granted yep. GROSS, which is generally recognized as safe. So is it true or false? Has he been um, funded uh, for that? Did I say well, that right, Doc? Okay, so Bill Gates, uh, you know, he funded uh, this uh, APEL, which is uh, this uh, covering around fruits and vegetables 
and it's labeled. You could see it. Um, the question is, um, um, they have been granted this seal of um, safety, right? It's called gross, generally recognized as safe. Um, the question is, is it, is it really that safe? <laughs> Yeah. What's the purpose of it? I don't quite get what it is. It's a, a, increased shelf life because ah. uh, if you cover it, it slows down the, um, the exposure to oxygen and, oh. and microbes and things like that. Yeah. So trace amounts of plutonium and so on to keep you food nice and fresh. All right. Let's, um, let's go on to social media again. Uh, uh, Angie V from YouTube, what are the best natural alternatives to antibiotics and antiviral meds? Well, the antibiotics I would do, you have oregano tablets. You can do oregano tablets, garlic, thyme, sage. All these are really good natural antibiotics. Um, also antiviral, then now we're getting into olive leaf extract is a really good one. Colloidal silver is a good one. Vitamin D is a good one. So that's what I, I would use um, because the complications are a lot less. All right, very good. As soon as you, I'm sorry, one more thing. If you, As soon as you start killing off the microbes with antibiotic, they, you really piss them off. And uh, now... Because <laughs> you kill off the good guys with the bad guys. So now you actually change the relationship to these microbes that depend on you. Now you get these super upset microbes that then um, no longer are as friendly as they were before. All right, so, don't, don't get them angry. Uh, now I'll tell you who's not angry, very calm looking, is uh, Ron or something from Amsterdam. I can't pronounce his name. But he's online uh, on behalf of his wife. So, Ron, if you are unmuted, go ahead with your one question for uh, Dr. Berg. Can you hear us, Ron? Amsterdam? Sylvania's your wife? Hello? Uh, for some reason, he can't hear us. So let's, uh, we we're not going to dump you, Ron, in case you get your stuff together there. Uh, but let's go back. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we can't hear. Hang on. Let me unmute you. Hang on. There you go. Go ahead, uh, Ron. Uh, we're talking about... Uh... Speak up a little bit, sir. Okay, well, I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Ron. Can you hear Hello, us? Dr. Burke? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can, can hear you me. perfectly. Go ahead with okay. your question. How are you doing, sir? Good. Um, it's not a coincidence, uh, I guess. I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, Sonia. Okay, what's your question? I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, Sonia. Yeah, go ahead with your question, sir. Uh, she's suffering from a severe case of gastric reflux after a somewhat traumatic gastroscopy in 2021, more or less 24-7. Uh, the doctors can't offer any real solutions other than prescribing protopump inhibitors and or surgery, which is horrifying. Uh, my question to you is, are you familiar to cases like this in your practice? What can she do to help herself? Okay, good question. Uh, th this is what I would do. Obviously, there's been trauma to the stomach. Um, I would, of course, go back to the basics because anything related to the stomach is going to be related to actual food. And so I would, I would do the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. But, but the, here's the key. I would do probably one meal a day. Why? Because this will give the stomach a chance to heal in between the meal. And uh, it wouldn't hurt to take um, a combination of things, betaine hydrochloride right before she eats to kind of get the stomach working a little bit better. On an empty stomach, it might be beneficial to take some raw wheatgrass juice powder with water. Why? Because um, that has a very unique uh, effect on the superficial skin of the lining of the digestive tract. Um, and then, of course, the, the last remedy would be called zinc carnosine, which is really good for 
everything related to going from ulcers to inflammation to um, leaky gut to gastritis to anything related to the stomach. Uh, that's you, what I would do. And could then you repeat um, the ingredient? I think you could probably just watch this video when we're done to get get it again because all everything is recorded. But betaine hydrochloride, zinc carnosine, and uh, um, and also wheatgrass juice powder with water. Oh, thank um, we'll you. Try that and uh, and study the videos I have on the digestive system, so you can get all the details. But um, these are things I think will will help her and um, give her some relief. Thank you, doctor. That's thank you, great. Well, we're rooting for your wife, Sylvania. Get back with us and let us know about your uh, pending success story. So that's just uh, terrific. Thanks for uh, hanging in there and waiting so long to get on the air. We do have. Uh, Magda, we'll get to you shortly. Don't worry. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to social media. Or no, even better, let's go back to our quiz question. And um, we're talking about this weird covering for food. It asked, or it's true false, the Bill Gates-funded APL food technology has been granted gross, which is generally recognized as safe. And the audience does, in fact, have an opinion on that. 90% uh, of our respondents say that uh, the appeal application is not safe in spite of what somebody else says. 10% say it is. Yeah, so the way this appeal, this uh, process goes for gross is that it's, uh, it's the FTE doesn't do the studies. It's the industry themselves that can do the studies ha. and determine if it's safe or not. So there could be a little bit of bias involved, possibly, maybe. So we have that. And so they just, um, they are considered gross. But here's the thing. The thing that really stood out on that, that product is that if you look on the ingredients, 99.3% of the ingredients is other ingredients. <laughs> so I'm like, what, what is this other ingredients? They don't really, they don't tell you. So it's kind of a mystery. You don't even get to know it's proprietary. So right there, I'm, you know, I'm a little suspect, Steve, when you can't actually put your ingredients, other ingredients in play. Well, and especially if it's like 99.3% of it. Hmm. Boy, that's a license to throw anything in there you want in it. I bet they don't cover yeah, their I, vegetables um, with it. I'll just let everyone else experiment, see what happens. But, <laughs> um, you know, you have like, let's say it's, cucumbers right or even like let's say you shave shave off i'm just going to shave the skin off my apple well first of all most of the nutrition is in this in the peel not in the pulp so okay just get rid of nutrition you know so you have the carbohydrate so anyway it's a i don't know if i'm crazy about that um that product there's other products that might be better but but maybe not uh like there's they, they put uh like shellac is one of the ingredients it's petroleum products so there's a lot of stuff you you know you got to really just look at what you're buying and making sure that the the shellac doesn't is not worse than um you know just not eating any, anything steve and i know some people are going to say oh my gosh no i can't even eat anything i can't can't eat well you can have you can drink water no you can't do water now, you, there's a plenty of things you can eat, but you just have to differentiate um, some of these products that, you know, initially they, they come out and they seem really great, but all of a sudden they find how many products were listed gross, but then they all of a sudden they find out there's a problem. Well, trans fats, there's been quite a few uh, products um, that are now found. Oh, we, we found they're dangerous, actually. Well, who did the safety, safety studies originally? That's what I want to know. How did they push that through? No kidding. It's a it's a real puzzle. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who we haven't heard from in quite some time, and that's Lady Trucker Toes from Rumble. And she's <laughs> back. <laughs> she's back. And uh, thanks to you, Lady Trucker Toes says, I have finally reached my ideal weight. Uh, what's the best way to maintain without losing additional weight? Don't change too much, but maybe add a little more fat to your diet. That's what I would do. All right, there, very you got to realize too, what's going to happen is you are going to hit a set point. You're going to, you are going to stop losing weight. Eventually you won't just 
get on the ketogenic diet and then lose weight till you're completely emaciated. It's not going to happen. So your body will adjust uh, at a certain point. But if you feel like you're too skinny, like Steve, then you can just start adding more fat. That's right. I'm wasting away. Let's see. Uh, Matt from YouTube. I have SIBO and can't eat vegetables. Is it okay to take potassium salts? Yeah. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it's a situation where you have microbes that are supposed to be in the large intestine. They're in the small. And then every time you eat, you get, you get the fermentation in the wrong place and you get bloating and the whole thing. So uh, I think um, you should probably do carnivore for, a, for two months you know, to clear that out. But yeah, you can do potassium. That's not going to interfere. You just don't want to do probiotics though because it's going to add more microbes to the small intestine. And also fiber will be a problem as well. Okay, here's VJ from Rumble. And by the way, Rumble, thank you all. You've really just grown like crazy and we appreciate a free speech uh, alternative uh, for us to ask questions and answer them on. VJ from Rumble, I've heard you say that hydroponically grown veggies are not as nutritious as veggies grown in healthy soils. How nutritious do you think packaged, pre-washed organic uh, uh, arugula and other salad ingredients are? Do you think those are hydroponic, Doc? Or? So, yeah, they just, I think if not, they passed this law where you could actually have, um, have hydroponic, hydroponic um, organic hydroponic. So just because it's organic doesn't mean it doesn't tell you it's soil grown versus grown in water. Unfortunately, they don't really tell you where a lot of the stuff is grown unless you go to their website and hopefully they're, they're transparent, but a good portion of our vegetables, including arugula are hydroponic or aeroponic, which is slightly different. They're going to add some air and mist. But there also is some, um, the, 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 the other part of it is like these are soil based, but you're growing in California. Um, but they're using only like NPK. So, um, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus as their three, um, minerals. So even that it's not that great. So when you get into salad or, or other greens, it's really, it's difficult to find something unless you can get a local farmer. Or even better yet, grow your own vegetables in your own um, your garden. I'm going to be releasing a um, a course that you could take to show how you could grow your own vegetables even in your house, um, but in actual soil because the soil is like that's where you have all the microbes. People say, "Well, there's microbes in hydroponic." Yeah, but do you get the same amount of microbes in hydroponic as you would get in soil? Well, then how does that work? Because you're flushing water through the system. So um, salad and, and other vegetables are meant to be grown in soil, not water. Um, they're not water. Other you know plants are, some are, but like seaweed, but most of them aren't. So yeah, it's uh, not a good, if you could just find something that's um, from a, a local farmer, that's going to be the best. All right, very good. Last but not least from our uh, on-air participants is Magdalena. She likes to be go by Magda, which I'm happy to call her. And she's from Poland, and that's a great thing. Magda, you're on with Dr. Berg. Make sure you unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm starting with uh, the statement that I am vegan, and I started intermittent fasting beginning of the year, and then two months ago, with ketogenic uh, diet. And I'm really worried a bit because I am very lean and I wanted simply to start this for longevity and autophagy. And yeah, I lost additionally to more than two kg and my friends are even worried, <laughs> you know, put on weight, put on weight, but I can't, I don't know really how I can do it. And a part of that, I've heard that one has to reduce the amount of protein in, to boost autophagy even more and now you know i am a little bit lost <laughs> mm -hmm. in which direction to, to to go so i am 50 k I, I was 50 kg now i'm under uh, 48 and i am one uh, 165 uh, centimeter uh, tall and then you say you're doing a vegan diet right now right 
Yeah. 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 We do, you don't want to lose, lower your protein. And I know that you want to get into autophagy right now, but um, autophagy, I would put that to the side right now. I think the key is trying to find how you're going to get enough quality protein um, with that diet, because it is difficult. It's, you do not want to reduce that protein um, because you're going to start feeling weak and it's going to affect your tissues. You're not going to look as healthy. So you're up against um, a difficult problem to solve because where are you going to find the quality protein in the, in the right amount of calories and the, keeping the carbs low and having the right fats? Uh, of course, I'm assuming that you're supplementing as well with the key nutrients, but it's difficult. It's a difficult problem. Um, could Would you be open to being a vegetarian? No. Okay. All right. Well, I think... No, it's a difficult problem. <laughs> okay. You're just going to have to experiment on, I guess, um, germinated nuts. Um, you might have to do some soy, organic soy products that are fermented. Um, you might have to do uh, different protein... Um, powders in a different, in a, in a combination that you have all the amino acids because, um, it's, it's, it's hard. So, and I, I, you know, there's some, a lot of details to get into and research and which I don't have time to go into, but I think, uh, yeah, you don't, I would, I would put this autophagy to the side and mm -hmm. don't worry about that right now. And just make sure you get all the nutrients. That's the most important thing. Yeah. 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 And also so, spirulina is a really good, uh, vegan uh, product that you should look at and take a good amount of that because um, you have a good source of protein from that and a lot of other vitamins, including the B vitamins and I think even DHA is in there possibly. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. That's great, Magda. Thank you so much for being such a great guest. And by the way, Dr. Berg, I don't know if I had told everybody, but I have a free program uh, for weight gain, if some people haven't, and it's all web-based. It features me sitting by the refrigerator, uh, drinking mayonnaise through a straw and other remedies to make sure that you gain weight quickly. You know what I'd like to do, Steve, with you? I'd love to surprise you sometime. Maybe Oops. I'll coordinate with your wife and surprise you and bring a video camera in there to do a um, maybe a, a pantry reveal uh -oh. with Steve. <clears throat> yeah, well... Uh-oh, we've lost Dr. Burke for a moment. I'm going to remedy that real quickly. So stand by, everybody, if you would. Oh, no, he got just came back. Terrific. Hey, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, we're back with you, Doc. So anyway, that would be terrific. And I mean well, but I'm not very disciplined. All right, let me just see if that can... Oh, yeah, can you hear us, Doc? Okay, everybody stand by for just a moment. I'm going to uh, <laughs> bring his camera down and bring it back up. Just a moment. He spins off. Can everyone else hear me? Did you like that, darling? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes. Doc, can, just, I, I think we got you back Steve. now. I think we got so, you back, I hope. Doc, can you hear us? Spinning right now. Uh, he's got the beach. last week. Oh, he's got the beach ball of death, audience. That's yeah. the worst. Um, That's strange. Let's see. I tell you what. He's probably going to reboot. Yeah. Now we just have to wait for him to come up. Okay, hang on just a second, folks. I'm going to put up the uh, boring slate. So I heard, call I heard Poland is a, um, at least a little bit more stable. <clears throat> um than the rest of the world. Is that true as far as uh, politically and things and uh, their uh, energy and things like that? Well, he doesn't hmm. realize he's yes in and a team. No, okay. depending okay. on <laughs> what you compare yeah, yeah. to. Right. <laughs> when, we, when we are looking into the east, more east, then for sure we are more stable. Yeah. Yeah, it's all relative. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I was like... Uh, <laughs> and uh, there is always... Uh, greener grass when you look yeah, <laughs> over exactly. the fence. So. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, audience, I guess the Thank only person grass. that can't hear me is yeah, Dr. Sure. Bird. Um, so yeah, Mag my, um, <laughs> my grandparents are from Poland, so... Uh, um, really? Wow, that's yep. interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, folks, I'm not quite sure to do with uh, what to do with our little anomaly Let's here. Let's see if Steve is texting me right now. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to ask him to do oh, a yeah. monologue uh, without my help. Oh, here he goes. Stand oh, by. I see this black screen uh, saying Wirecast. 
No, Steve. Well, um, can you hear me right now from the cell phone? Because I can hear all the uh, the uh, people in the green room, just so you know. Okay, very good. So Dr. Berg and I have a side channel. Very exciting. He figured it out. Uh, so you can hear me, Dr. Berg. Is that correct? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, very good. So let's move along uh, with right. the next deal. Stand by. Let me go back to social media. BK from Rumble. Is plaque in the arteries primarily calcium? I have a 70% blockage in an artery. What's the best way to naturally eliminate plaque? I've heard cayenne pepper might be effective. You know, I just did a video on it, but I'm not even sure if I released it yet. Stay tuned. But uh, yes, it is going to be more, mostly calcium. And it's um, one of the best things to do is to uh, support, change the diet for sure to get rid of the inflammation. But the other thing is to take the vitamin K2 um, but it's hard to find vitamin K2 in the right amounts. So you want to find, I think Life Extension is the only company that sells the mega K2. Uh, you want like 45 milligrams, not micrograms. So that way the body can drive the calcium to the bone. Now, some people, um, when they start taking vitamin D and K2, they might temporarily notice that their calcium goes up. And that's because it's the calcium is being mobilized from your tissues and it has to go up through the blood to get to the bone. So, you know, you want to look at the whole picture of what's happening, but uh, vitamin K2 is a very good um, standard remedy to help remove calcium, but also realize there's going to be other things as well. So stay tuned for that video. All right, let's go to uh, social media anonymous from YouTube. Is there a way to prevent or reduce gallbladder polyps? Well, that's really pr primarily decreasing inflammation in the gallbladder. So you have to make sure you get rid of the seed oils. You want to make sure you start eating healthy and doing intermittent fasting. And hopefully those will go away. It's something, go back to the basics um, and just stick with that. All right, very good. Let's see. Ray up from Rumble. Uh, what are your thoughts on the carnivore diet? Is it okay to eat uh, fermented vegetables on that diet? No, it's not a, not not the carnivore. It's basically to be the carnivore adding something else. Carnivore is just meats and eggs and fish and stuff like that. So, if you're adding the adding some fermented vegetables, the added the vegetables, you'll feel um, you know it's going to be a different diet. I I like that option. I like that option, but yes, you can combine those. I that's, I think, uh, like even my first meal of the day is going to be. I'm going to do some meat and sauerkraut. Good. Okay, Doc. How about our final question for the day? And I'll read it for you. What dietary issue is usually connected with foaming urine? That's a very earthy question. But go ahead, audience, and uh, get onto that. Let's see. Let's go to uh, JW from Rumble. Which supplements would you recommend to treat varicose veins? So um, there's several things that you can do for varicose veins, but um, one of the best um, remedies to support that is a bile flavonoids because that supports the collagen. Um, there's a cell in our body called the fibroblast, which... Can you hear me, Steve? Because I'm right in the middle of explaining this this answer for you. Oh, good. Uh, yes, I can. Sorry, I was distracted with our technical issues. Go ahead. Okay, so we basically have bioflavonoids uh, that supports, there's a cell called a fibroblast that actually makes collagen. And um, that fibroblast needs magnesium. That's really, really key. Uh, but bioflavonoids from certain, um, you know, bell peppers and certain vegetables uh, can help um, give you, and even lemons too. If you, if you juice the whole lemon, you get the bioflavonoids and, or just uh, don't juice it, just blend it and drink it down with some water. Um, you'll get the bioflavonoids you need. That, and that can support potentially help you with the varicose veins and spider veins. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. 
Joe's Wandry from YouTube. I'm on a 18-6 intermittent fasting schedule. Is it okay to finish off my meals with a low-carb snack like berries? Yeah, not a problem. Wow, that was quick. All right, you're off the hook, Joe. You can do just that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Linwood from Facebook. I've started taking 1,000 milligrams of uh, uh -oh, bromelain. Did I say that to reduce inflammation mm -hmm. in my body? What are your thoughts about its benefits? Bromelain is good for inflammation. And uh, so uh, it's a great, powerful anti-inflammatory. Um, and uh, that's what I would, I would take it for. All right, very good. Moving on, Sugar Studio, <laughs> what a name, from YouTube. Uh, can niacin increase our blood sugar levels? Well, um, uh, that was asked before. I don't think so. I, I don't think it's uh, correlated with that. I have not seen any problem with that. So the answer would be no. Okay, and I'll never ask that question again. Let's move on to Yousef from YouTube. A friend of mine recommended that I watch your videos, and I find them very interesting. I, I am chubby. Uh, with a big belly, what's the best way to lose the belly fat? Well, if I knew that, would I be doing this webinar, Steve? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I would. I think you you could cut down your carbs. Do ins, you know, start doing intermittent fasting. Uh, apple cider vinegar, berberine, uh, all these things are going to start helping you with the belly fat. And uh, I've done pretty much. There you go. Boy, what a day. Audience, forgive us for our technical difficulties. We're going to climb on the manufacturer of this software today and let them have it. But anyway, Dr. Berg, you're back. You disappeared for a moment. Uh, we do have answers to our final quiz question for the day. And that question asked, what dietary issues is usually connected with foaming urine? And I don't know why that disturbs me so much. 20% say, um, what is that? Uh, kidney related 10 percent say acid 50 percent say protein and salt and 20 percent say diabetes well the foaming is going to be more protein in the urine steve so you're in, you're in too much protein because i the key is the dietary aspects of this it could be kidney disease but it also could be you're just eating too much protein start cutting it down and that way you can get rid of those foamy bubbles that look like soap all right. Well, I'm ashamed because I'm supposed to be the big technical guy. And Dr. Burke saved the day with the side phone uh, gig, which has brought us all the way to the end of the show successfully. So thank you, Dr. Burke, for doing my job for me. And I think, did we answer all the questions? Yes, that was the all final the, question. Uh, so not proud. the questions, but the participants. Uh, uh, yes, we went through. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Did we not go to Dory? Oh, no, Dory, we did. And Sylvania, yeah, we have, uh, we have everyone wrapped up. Okay. Well, on that note, Steve, um, thank you for um, your patience and your tolerance of all these technical difficulties. Uh, Steve um, is going to basically promise next time he, this won't happen. And uh, if it does, he will give out the diamonds like he promised. Suitcase so full of diamonds. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, stay tuned for some really interesting videos I'm going to be releasing, especially tomorrow morning which is going to be entitled why are there no why are there no fat people in colorado stay tuned for that video tomorrow morning it should be interesting